Psalms 111. Praise ye the Lord. I think it's pretty simple what Psalms is trying to tell us. And there's praise to anything but the Lord you've sinned. There's many praises going out to many different people, but not going out to the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. And he says, praise the Lord. And he says, make sure you don't think I'm a hypocrite. I praise the Lord with my whole heart. Now that's the law. You shall love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. That's obeying the law. and We're in the law in song. An assembly of the upright, a group of people who are doing right. They're an assembly of people who don't do right. And in the congregation. I mean, there are churches out there, assembly and congregations, that are not upright. They don't praise the Lord. And they're wrong. The works of the Lord are great. And everything around us. Everything of the natural form involves God. And that God has given man capability of making cars, using a telephone, to providing us air, food, water, giving us a heart that keeps going, giving us lungs to handle the air, giving us a mind to think, giving us a good solid ground to walk on. Give us a sun during the day and a moon by night. That's great. Sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. And there's pleasure in what God has done. And there is pleasure in what God is doing. But there can also be a pleasure applied to sinful ways. That violates the scripture. Hebrews speaks about uh, Moses. He didn't want to enjoy the, 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 the pleasure for, of sin for a season. And yet, there's nothing more than serving God and the pleasure of serving God. It's wonderful. It's great. And for me, like the street ministry, you get somebody comes cussing in my face and yelling and screaming and telling me everything filthy under the sun. Well, I kind of take pleasure in that because the Bible said there will be scoffers. The Bible said many will go the broad way. The Bible says marvel not the world hate you. The Bible has been made real by a fool. Everything the expectation of a public ministry, the Bible has already told me, and when they act such as they do, the Bible's correct. His work, God's work, is honorable and glorious. The things that God has made, the colors that God has developed for us to enjoy, and we're to honor God with our food. We're honor, we ought to honor God with our paycheck. We ought to honor God with what God has given us. And it ought to be glorious. This is the day that the Lord has made, has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Oh, I hate Monday. Why? Any other day of the week, the Lord made Monday. If it's horrible and terrible, you made it that way. We have a great and wonderful, glorious God, and His righteousness endures forever. Realize, I'm saved, and if you're saved, when we get past the great white throne judgment, I don't mean Christians are going to, but when the great white throne judgment is over, and the new heavens and the new earth, 
and New Jerusalem. God is forever right. God was right, Genesis 1, 3. God is right since he set forth this the night, the, the night and the day were the first day and time. God is right when all time will stop in Revelation 20. And God is right in, in the eternal life to come. We have a God that is great and we have a God that is forever right and never, never is he wrong. And that we're going to a place as Christians, New Jerusalem, everything we do will be right. James tells us about this filthy tongue of ours. Yet this tongue when it's made into the new body, the new creature in New Jerusalem, it will never be lit on the hell fire. It will be tamed in heaven. That's right. Everything I think in heaven will be right. Not all my thoughts today are right. And not all your thoughts are correct. But we're coming to an eternal life with God where everything, everything will be right. That's remarkable. He, God, has made his wonderful works to be remembered. We get a new heaven and a new earth. We're to remember God often. The Lord's Supper is a memory of Jesus suffering and dying and to remind us he's coming back. You know why I sin? I don't know about you, but you know why I sin? I'm not talking about the sin that I want to do. I'm talking about, you know, I'm going through life and next thing you know, I do something that's a sin. Why do I do that? Because I forgot about God. Have you ever really sin accidentally when you're thinking about God? Now, I know when you're reading your Bible and studying your Bible and prayer, I know the devil comes in and throws that thought in there. But just basically, without the devil's help, we sin. And if you look back the next time, mine is what the devil does to us. But when you sin against God, Look back and say, was I thinking about God? Was I meditating on his word? Was Probably not. Oh, Lord is gracious. The Lord is gracious. And full of compassion. Not willing that any should perish. Why is not the rapture? The Lord is not willing that any perish. That we are left here to go and preach the gospel. Nothing else. And if Christians would step up to the plate and do what they're supposed to do, maybe the rapture would happen a lot sooner. But even I fail. God, mercy, compassion, graceful for God so loved the world we love him because he first loved us and God's love for God is love is a charity love it's a giving love what can God get from us well I can go out and tell people about Jesus well so can another person I can pray to God so can somebody else. Listen, if I dropped out of the race today, if I died today, God can find somebody else. It's not me. And if that person or myself don't do what God tells you to do, he'll find somebody else. But as God, we can't find another God. What other God has compassion is gracious enough that he suffered and died? That he 
went to the cross for us. Tell me one God of all the gods in the world that suffered in pain for whether they are a creation God or evolution God. I mean, the God of Islam is, if you won't convert to our religion, take their head off or make them slaves. The God of the Roman Catholic Church, you don't believe in our mass, you don't believe in Mary, and you know, you're an anathema. In other words, just go straight to hell. The Council of, of the Catholic Church, if you don't believe their doctrine, you don't believe their teaching, the hell with you. That's what a national means. I'm not Catholic. Well, their God's not too kind. And then four for the other religions. Why don't go pedal a bike, go knocking on doors, or why don't go passing out magazines and I'm not happy with that God. Or that God's not happy with me. And yet the God of the Bible. What must I do to be saved? I must believe on the God that suffered and died upon Calvary's cross. What can I do? Nothing. Every other God in the world, you got to do something. You got to do something, but you can't do enough. Our God, you can't do enough. What do I do? It's all done through me. Our God let the creation beat and people don't like this, but tough. Our God, the creator, let the creation beat the crap out of Jesus, who's God. The Bible says you couldn't even identify who Jesus was. That's a loving God. That's a merciful God. I mean, when they're beating Jesus with their fists, Jesus said, I, could, I can ask the Father for a legion of angels, if not more. And yet in compassion, he took it. Compassion, stand before Pilate and did not say a word. That's a God of compassion. He, God, has given meat unto them that fear him. Where's your food come from? No, it doesn't come from the grocery store. No, it doesn't come from the farmers. It comes from God. And I preach at a farmer's market Saturday, and I remind are you thanking God for that produce you're selling? Are you thanking God for the produce you're buying? That comes from God. And yet in America, how much food is thrown in the dumpster? I work for uh, one of these kind of fast food restaurants, I'm not going to give the name. And I had an employee one time who, who was a, a, a unwed mother. I don't know whatever it was, none of my business. She had children, they were hungry. And I gave her a box of food that we were getting rid of, throwing out. And I got, I got written up. And I was advised because I was a ship ship leader. I am not to do that ever again. I am take the food and put it out in the dumpster. And make sure I lock that lock that dumpster so nobody can break in. Perfectly good food. Maybe 12 hours old. That's a waste. Yet God gives us that food. Whatever it is. Whatever it be pork, beef, uh, bakery. It comes from God. He will. Here's a will of God. He will. God will. Ever be mindful of his covenant. And that's talking to the nation of Israel. And there are people out there who say. God's all finished with Israel. No he's not. That's a lie. God will not and cannot. And ever finish. 
the covenant. Because he's ever mindful of the covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 tribes and the people called Jews today. You know what we have a God that, that, that it says, remember, verse 4? We have a God that has great memory. Sometimes I can't even remember what I did today. I have moments, you know, I, I come, I get a good thought in my head. Yesterday, I'm, I'm studying something, I had a good thought in my head. And about the moment I am about to do that, what that thought was, boom, it's gone. God's not like that. God is not like that. But I'll tell you one thing that God cannot ever remember and forget. Any and all your sins that are under the blood. If you honestly put your sins under the blood of Jesus Christ, God don't remember. Now you may remember, the devil may have you remember, but if it's under the blood, God doesn't remember. God made a promise to us. I'll never leave thee or forsake thee. God remembers that promise. God remembers, hey, I told Paul to write, there's a, there's a time coming that we call the rapture, the last trump shall blow. It has been many, 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 many years. God says, the Lord's Supper, as far as the second advent, as far as the rapture, you take part in the Lord's Supper, you remember that I remember I'm coming. He has, God has shown forth his people, Israel, the power of his work. All I'm going to say is the Old Testament. All the miracles of Egypt, the drowning of Pharaoh, the manna, the water from rock, Jericho's wall, the Red Sea, the, the Jordan River for Elijah and Elijah, the resurrection. The oil that, that, that in the meal that didn't end. The, the miraculous battles and, and conquests of the children of Israel where they won. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. And then think about his wonderful power that Jesus done. That John writes in the last chapter of his gospel. Hey, we can't record it all. Count your many blessings. Yeah, start counting, but you ain't going to finish. There ain't enough trees. I'm 51 years old. I was born in 1968. That's a lot of blessings. You take 51 years times 365 days, add in the leap days. And then you find out how many days and you add 24, uh, you multiply by 24 for how many hours. Then you multiply by 60 how many minutes. Then you multiply that by how many 60. So you get how many seconds in every single second of the day of my life. It's been a blessing. By God. And how many different blessings are for that moment of seconds. There may be two, three, or four. He may give them, the Jews, the heritage of the heathen. That's the land. That's the land. They go in there and they've taken the land. And that land was the heathen. Under Joshua. I don't know how much of the land will be given to the heathen. Uh, Revelation speaks about giving the court to the Gentile when Jesus Christ comes back. <coughs> Excuse me. But Jesus Christ is going to give that land of Israel no matter what heathen, what Gentiles in that land. When Jesus Christ comes back, you get, get out. That's Israel's land. Right now, it's, it's vice versa. That land is being turned over to the Gentiles. The works of his hand are verity. And that is truth and fact. 
And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth. Everything recorded in the Bible and everything not recorded in the Bible is a fact. Even when a man lies, even when the devil lies, it's a fact. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. I don't care what you say. It's a fact that God, the creator, made it. It's a fact that God made a man named Adam. It's a fact that out of Adam's rib that he made a woman. It's a fact. It's a fact that a 100-year-old that man and a 90-year-old woman had a baby. That's a fact. It's a fact that, that Rebecca went to God and said, what's going on in my belly? God said, there's two, there's two nations in that womb. That's a fact. Abraham, I will bless him that bless you. I will curse him that curse you. That's a fact. Jesus Christ is coming. That's a fact. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scripture. That's a fact. Jesus Christ was buried. That's a fact. Jesus Christ arose again the third day according to the scripture. That's a fact. There was a man named Paul on the road to Damascus and he got saved on that by Jesus. That's a fact. There was a man named Simon Peter. That's a fact. There were blind people made to see. That's a fact. Psalms is a fact. Genesis is a fact. Exodus is a fact. God is a fact. And judgment. Now, that's not the liberal God. Judge not, least you be judged. See, that's not the liberal God. Liberal God just bouncing and puts, eh, along the pays, pansies and along the flowers and just skipping it. He's just a good, happy, old, lucky little God. And what you do wrong, I don't see. We have a holy and righteous God for sinners and for the saved that what we do wrong will be judged. And for the Christian will be chastised. And if it's not under the blood, we will have wood, hay, or stubble, and we will be judged action. And for the lost man, the books will be open, and they will be judged out of those books. That's a fact. All his commandments are sure. All that God said in the law. All that God said to the prophets, all that God said through Jesus, all that God told the apostles are right, they're sure. You rest in them. You put your faith in them. Thou shalt not steal. Okay, yep. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Yep, that one's for me. Pray without ceasing. Yep, that's mine. Obey the Sabbath. That's not mine. That's Israel. Under the law. So you got to rightly divide, the Bible says, too. Thou love thy neighbor as thyself. Yep, I can claim that. Be not deceived. Yep. They stand fast. The judgments, the commandments, forever and ever. And are done in truth. There's that truth again and in uprightness there's a correctness I believe Israel in the new earth will be under the law I believe that new earth is for Abraham and his descendants the tabernacle is in heaven the tabernacle is with God for the Jews in the new earth the holy of holies the mercy seat is the actual throne of God with Jesus Christ right there He sent redemption to buy back unto his people, Israel. And he commanded his covenant forever. So how do you say God's all done with Israel? When it's forever. And when you say God's all finished with Israel, then forever must have happened and come and gone. Because he said forever. The covenant he made with Israel. I am your God. You are my people. 
I have a land grant for you. Forever. Some people don't know what forever is. And they put true love forever, and they get married and get a divorce. That's not forever. And then you don't have a forever in true love. Jesus said, when you die, you're neither married, but you're as the angels in heaven. So as a Christian, don't put true love forever, because that true love forever is for you and Jesus and Jesus and you. Or it should be. Holy and reverend is his name. And I know people out there in the ministry have their name. I am reverend so-and-so. That title does not belong to you. That title belongs to God and is associated with his name. You better drop reverend. Because when you call yourself reverend, you're telling the people to give you reverence. And the only one to be reverence is God and not you. That's what the name reverend means. We ought not to be worshiping men. People in church have a bad time of worshiping preachers, pastors, evangelists, and all that without you helping them say, I'm the reverend. You're telling me you don't know what the word reverend is. The fear of the Lord. That ain't happening much today. You tell me today the fear of the Lord, because it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The world is lacking wisdom. Why? Because they don't fear God. They fear coronavirus. They fear riots. They buy a gun because they fear their fellow person. And they don't put the faith in God. And they don't fear God with their sins. And they so not fear God that the churches are closed. That's not fearing God. That's fearing a virus. Don't come near me six feet. Well, what about God protecting you? And if you really think that your congregation is watching your live feed on YouTube or Facebook and they're watching it entirely, you've been fooled. I read a thing last week that said most people are not watching it. And if they are watching some service, they're watching another church's service. That's kind of interesting. A good understanding have all they that do his commandment. All right. I love and, and, and give God and, I, you know, I understand the Bible. Do you go out and witness to tell people about Jesus? No. Is it not commanded to go you all the world and preach the gospel? I don't know. Then you don't have understanding. Does the Bible say we're to pray without ceasing? Well, I don't know. You have no understanding. Then does the Bible say refrain from uh, all appearance of evil? Well, I don't know. You don't have an understanding. Did the Bible say be angry? Yep. Sin not? I don't know. You have no understanding. I live by the Sermon on the Mount. You have no understanding because that Sermon on the Mount is not for the church. There are commandments for the Jewish people and there are commandments for the lost people and there are commandments for the saved people and you have not rightly divided the word of truth because you have not studied the word. That's, the Bible says, study to show thyself a proof of the God. Do you read and study your Bible? No. You don't have understanding. 
Do you know what you're supposed to do as a Christian? No. You don't have understanding. And what kind of office do you hold in your church? You don't know, and you have been given an office in your church, and you have no wisdom, and you have no understanding. What are you doing? And his praise endures forever. You know, all the praise that you give God, you'll forever give God praise and glory. Jew or Gentile saved. Forever when we get the glory is not to sit down in a rocking chair and, and go fishing and pet the dog. When we get the glory is forever worshiping God and Jesus Christ on the throne. Many people will not like heaven because it's all about Jesus and God and not about them. 